Hello, I'm Brad Exum with Fast Fuel Systems, and when we go to trade shows and dealers, people ask us, why do we want to take air out of fuel? It's, we have a lot of people out there purchasing our product for just to have a great transfer pump, great filtration, and they know the benefits of the fuel mileage. But let's get into the hardcore of how we save injectors, then we're going to get into how we increase performance, and then we're going to show you how it works. You're going to see the visual of a stock filter, how it works, how it passes air, how it creates air. Then we're going to see the fast taking it out, and while we're looking at these two things, we're going to look down here and see the air in the fuel, which is really cool. We can put a visual after the text. What we have over here is a caterpillar diagram. They, sent, they have it in their books, it's black and white. We gave it some color to help distinguish the parts and what's going on. Inconsistent fuel flow is what air causes at first. We know it as fuel starvation. Fuel, another word for fuel starvation is air and vapor. They're all, it's the same thing. Air causes a lot of injection component damage. It increases emissions. When you take air out, carbon monoxides and dioxides come down. When you take air out, horsepower goes up. If you don't abuse the horsepower too much, you'll see an increase in fuel economy. Air creates a sluggish feeling. But let's go into the damaging effects that it does to this injector. They're using, a Caterpillar's using, using a unit injector because that's all that was out at the time. Now we have common rail. It does the same thing to common rail, but even worse, because the tolerances are tighter, the pressures are higher, so lubrication is more important. And one of the things I should shoot in here, we help out lubrication at least 10%, and I'm gonna tell you where that number comes from, but I will not deter anyone from using a lub a lubricating properties, you know, adding more. Just with the fast, you don't have to fill it up every time to get those lubricating properties, but it's gonna to help to put something else in there. When this plunger comes down, what Caterpillar's talking about is a fluid dampening effect in that tip. When you keep it full of fuel, it's like a shock absorber for that plunger to spring off of. But when there's a lack of fuel, you have up to 50% more impact. And that's where they're talking about blown tips coming from. I was at this mining association one time as a guest speaker, and I was talking about this. I didn't know I had a chemist out in my audience, and he stopped me and he said, Brad, wait a minute, and he came up. He said, wait, if you have air, fuel, and high pressure here, you just build a cutting torch. Well, instead of running with it, I found out more about it, and I went to an OEM, someone that I know is the number one fuel engineer there, and he just said, that's correct. What you get is a, a settling torch effect coming out of the orifice of the injector, and it opens it up little by little. So then you lose your atomization. It, you know, it's not as fine. Then I started thinking, notice I didn't tell you that as a fact, this is from my performance background. As you open up those orifices, they don't open evenly. So then air and fuel is gonna start following the path of least resistance and start favoring certain orifices in your injector. And it's gonna deteriorate that metal and I'm thinking, well, as it's deteriorating the metal and it's pounding, that's contributing to the failure rate of that injector. Then later on, especially, and we're talking about stock engines, now you go and crank that horsepower up, you're gonna add to that cutting torch effect, and then start possibly cutting into the piston. Now the other place that we help it out, and in this, in the, and it's very critical in common rail, it's up and down the side where the film is, keeping the metals apart. Just like oil on a crank and rod, the oil's there to keep the metals from touching. But when there, the Caterpillar says there's at least 10% air and fuel, Cummins says there's air and fuel, other manufacturers say there's air, there's air and fuel. But when you measure it, it's a critical part. If, it is, if it's been sitting overnight, nice and cool, hardly any air. Once you start that engine up, start agitating it, which we're gonna show you over here, you can start getting more air, and I'll go over that. So, as it's sitting there galling and scoring, if it doesn't hang up, it'll wear over a period of time and separate those tolerances. So instead of injecting the fuel at the tip, all of it, it starts blowing by the side and you lose your efficiency, which causes performance. Remember, performance is fuel mileage, horsepower emissions, the way the engine feels, the heat of the engine, things like that. That's where we're, we're becoming known for saving injectors. And we have, story after story of how we do that. Now let's get into the performance of an engine. 
Fuel injection came about for two reasons. To inject a predetermined amount of fuel at a predetermined time. Well, how does air affect that? Simply right here. Air occupies space. And a liquid is not com compressible if, there's, if the air is completely out of it. Let's look at your brake lines on your car or truck. Hydraulic brake lines, that is, not air, but hydraulic brakes. If there's air in your brakes and you go to push down on the brake pedal, it delays the clamping force back here. It doesn't brake as well. Well, same thing back here. It delays when the fuel actually goes in the cylinder. So, I'm going to show you some spray patterns, and we're just using the spray patterns for illustration, not actual spray patterns. Let's imagine this is a 100% correct spray pattern coming out of these orifices, and that's what we were talking about earlier, the air opening them up, cutting them open. This one's 80, and this one's 60. You could put 90, 50, you can make whatever numbers you want on these. It's just for demonstration purposes. While this one's at 100%, let's imagine that the pistons advance further down the you know, cylinder wall, 80% and moves up 60%. What we're actually talking about is degrees, though. In all reality, we're talking about 0, 3 degrees difference. That's what we're learning. Air is not in every injection, so some injections are perfect. But air is in other injections, and it delays it up to about 3 degrees at times. That's why your engine will sit there and idle real smooth and you'll feel like a miss or a hesitation. That's air in that, net, in that injection. So this is your injector. This is your piston here. Let's say it's supposed to fire when it's down here, but air delays your injection timing. That piston's up here. There's several things going on. First of all, it's building, building cylinder pressure as it comes up. So when that fuel does come out delayed, it has to fight against the pressure coming out, kind of like running against the wind. The other thing is, it has less time for the fuel to distribute across that piston. So you have more concentrated heat in different spots, where, wherever that spray pattern is. Then the next thing is, with that shorter burn, you don't burn as much of your fuel. So you, you pull the piston down. Uh, we're talking about degrees, OK? Milliseconds. Pull that piston down, you have less cylinder pressure to fight against, so you have better distribution. You also have a longer burn. The longer burn burns more of the fuel than the short burn when it's up here. So when you burn more of the fuel, you get more power with the same amount of fuel. If you don't need that power, you pull your foot out of it, now you have fuel mileage. Now if you balance it between using the horsepower and the fuel mileage, you still have fuel mileage, you're just not going to have as much. Now if you go bearing your foot into it all the way and use all the fuel, you could actually burn more fuel. So that's, that's the other side of it. But we're going to get you there faster. So it's what you want. You regulate yourself. So you pull the piston down, fire it, you get a longer burn. Pull your foot out of it, now you pick up fuel mileage. And that's, so now that we've learned how air affects the timing, how it affects your performance, you know, fuel mileage gains that we usually get, we guarantee zero. Most of our big rig guys, the semis, we have a fleet now of 1,500 coming on. Uh, they're a little bit larger than that. They picked up a solid seven tenths across the board. We like putting our name on four tenths. That way, if you do better, it's, it's all, and that's, there you go. We'd rather understate and overperform. But four tenths on 125 to 200,000 miles is a lot of money. On the pickup guys, on conservative drivers, we usually see two to three more miles to the gallon. Some of them, uh, with the Duramaxes, the 7.3 Fords, and the 6 liter Fords, um, they usually get w a little bit over three miles to the gallon, where they're noticing about 90 more miles to a 30, 35 gallon tank. So there's some variables in there, but we don't guarantee fuel economy. That's up to your right foot and watching your variables in the first place. Now we're going to take this text, these visuals, and we're going to put it in to actually seeing it work. You just got to see how clear the fuel looks. With the lights in here, you could see on the side how the bubbles, there weren't bubbles in the fuel. 
And remember this, on our display stand, the feed lines that would be going to the engine, like this one off the fast and this one off the stock filter, it just drains because we don't have a shut off or anything like that. So we'll fire it up in a minute, it takes a while, a minute to purge all this air. But before we start it, what I want to do is sit here and just slosh the fuel and watch how, how little sloshing that I'm doing compared to if you're in a mining application or you're going down the road in your pickup or your semi. Look how this is really foaming up. See this? Now we're going to come up here close and take a look at it. See how that foam's building? We don't even have any agitation from the engine return or the simulated engine return. You can see it, see it building, but come over here and take a look at the fuel from the side now. And I'm not really rocking this thing hard, but see that air entrained in the fuel down here, these bubbles? And I'm gonna start sl stop sloshing so you can see it. Now, this is where we don't show off on a dyno all the time. As you stop the vehicle, it only takes a few minutes for that air to rise out. Now we're going to fire the pumps up and watch the fuel agitate. And we're just going to give this a few minutes and watch this build. Imagine that being the engine return. Look how quick, we're, we're talking 15 seconds. Look at the foam, look at this. Now you heat it up, a hot fuel holds less entrained air from sloshing but produces more vapor under a vacuum, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Cold fuel produces less vapor under a vacuum but holds more entrained air from sloshing. Let's go up top and watch the pumps and how we take that air out and how air forms in the filter. Coming up to this top side of the fuel tank, here's what we have. This is a stock filter setup simulation. We have the suction here, which you can see the air coming in, and it looks pretty consistent. What happens on the suction side, you fill that filter up, you put it on, and it's all full at first. The center stays full, but the outside, as the pass, fuel passes through, the, out, the filter filters dirt back because dirt occupies space, but air also occupies space, and it fills up the outside portion of the filter element. So at first, you have fairly good fuel going to, to the engine. But as that air collects, the fuel level drops on the outside, the dirty side of the filter. Once it drops to an equilibrium point, then it will not drop anymore. At that point, then that's when you start getting the air passing through the extreme top of the filter. That's when you really start getting the surges. You can see how it kind of, you always have air going through, but you can see the surging. So it goes from the tank, through the filter, to the simulated engine pump back here. And you can see how it surges. Once it hits the pump, the pump acts as a blender, sending it to the injectors. Now remember, a lot of this air goes back to the tank, a lot with the excess fuel, with the fuel that's not needed by the injectors. So a lot of this goes back, but you can see this, how it surges there. That's when you're sitting there idling in your truck and it feels like a miss, that lope, that's air. You also have that going down the road in a worse condition and it feels like it's laboring to do the same job. Earlier when you had cool fuel and a full tank of fuel, it ran better. Well, this is what's going on. Now. You can see this air going in. Let's, let's imagine this is a low flow system like an old B model cat, C model cat, where there's less air in the fuel because of less agitation from the pump, the engine itself. Take a new common rail where you're doing 70, 90 gallons an hour or you crank the engine up. You can see how that just intensifies the flow. So when you go and put on a filter system that only takes dirt and water out but gives you a lot of volume, you just killed your injectors even more. You can see that air. And there's filter systems out there that are trying to look like us and be like us. 
but they don't take the air out of fuel. So that's what's going on. So I'm going to slow this pump down. We're going to go over to the fast. Before we start on how the fast takes it out and how it operates and the air going back to the tank and pure fuel going to the engine, I want to show you this portion. I want to show you fuel restriction. See this? This is before the pump. We can be it before our pump, before the engine pump. Going through, and I have a restrictor valve here that I'm going to restrict in just a minute. And you can see this here. I want to show the differences between the restriction, a dirty filter, and after. So I'm going to restrict this little by little. You can actually hear it cavitating. See, look at this fuel here. Compared to this fuel up here, you're actually boiling fuel, fuel starvation, vapor. Now I want to give you this thought process here. If you have a dirty filter, or when you have a dirty filter, you lose horsepower and you lose fuel mileage. It's also harder in your injection components, wiping out your injectors over a period of time. You've gone from five inches of restriction, three inches of restriction, somewhere in there on a clean filter, to a dirty filter where it's three or four inches of restriction more. Then you change it. And the reason you change it is to get rid of that right there. But a clean filter still has restriction. If you go to a manufacturer's test cell, they don't have a restriction. They have the engine sitting down here where our fuel tank is, but their fuel tank is up on top of the building. 15, 20 feet high, gravity feeding. There's none of this restriction there. They're putting a hot area to return back to another tank, and that fuel tank's not sloshing, creating all this foam that you saw earlier. You saw the entrained air in there. So imagine going from a, from a dirty filter to a clean filter. You picked up performance and fuel mileage. What would happen if you got the rid of the restrictions of that dirty filter? went to a clean filter, which is actually on top of the building. That's what you get when you go to FAST. Now, we have the water separator, and it sucks through the water separator up to our pump. From our pump, we pressurize this fuel filter, we separate the air out, and send it back to the tank. Optics are everything. See how clean that looked? That a light on it? It's, well, it's, you can still see it purging through there. And the sunlight, that's very hard to see. If you leave this off for a few minutes and then fire it back up, this is all, almost impossible to see. But once you start going down the road and agitating it, this is what you see. Then what you want going to your engine is right here. Pure fuel. You put the fluid dampener, the shock absorber back in there, you get rid of the cutting torch, you increase your lubricity at least 10%, and you let it fire when it's supposed to, so you give it a longer burn. When you give it a longer burn, you're burning more of the fuel. You get more horsepower with the same amount of fuel. Pull back on it and pick up fuel mileage. With the mass flow return, sitting there just continually polishing it, sending this back to the tank at a separate return line. You never want to tie an engine, your engine return with the return of any system, adding, creating more back pressure to your engine. This is what you want for performance. This is what you want to increase your profits. This will increase, increase life. It will increase fuel mileage. There's so many cold weather applications of this that we do very well. And you, you finally see what it looks like in your tank going down the road. I do appreciate your time.